Wow, check out that scenery, it's absolutely stunning. Welcome to another blog where this month you join me in Western Spain where I'm fishing the mighty Orellana. I've been out here for 10 days now and it's been a proper adventure from start to finish. So let's take a look at some of the footage that I've put together. First view of the lake. First morning then and uh, Pretty good fishing conditions if I'm honest because it's nice and wet, nice and warm as well and some good winds blowing on the lake at the moment so it's looking good for the next few days and this rain's about to disappear in the next hour or so so we've got to get the van all packed up and get down to the shops, get some supplies and then get out onto the lake so yeah, looking forward to it. I don't know why I'm filming myself being poorly, but yeah, I feel absolutely rotten. <laughs> what do you do? I picked up a bug from uh, Jim's house. When I got there, his little grandson was there and he'd been puking up all day. So he's picked up a bug, his missus is down with it, and I'm stuck out here with, with it as well. So yeah, didn't fish last night and uh, we stayed the night at um, uh, Ressies and uh, Edwin's, and then they took us out onto the lake today. I've tied up some rigs and Got a bivy up and what have you, but I just cannot be asked to put the rods out, so I'm just feeling feeling bad. Just puked a couple of hours ago and um, not in anything all day either, so yeah, so I'm gonna miss a, a day's fishing, but hey ho, hopefully, I'll feel better in the morning. Back in the land of the living, yep, a uh, bit of a rough night last night, but I feel alright now, and uh. Jim's just come round and we're just having a chat about the swim because you know we have to go on local knowledge when you come to a lake like this. We don't know anything about it, but the swim that they've put us in, both of us are sitting here thinking, hmm, if I was arriving at this lake, it isn't somewhere that I wouldn't particularly choose. And I trust them, I trust the locals. You've always got to go with the locals. They uh, they know the lake like the back of the hand, but. I'm not saying we're not going to catch from here, but um, we've both got similar thoughts, haven't we, mate, really, that there's potential other areas around the around the other side of the, the lake that's a little bit better, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, it's just too steep. There's no variation of, of water depth. We've just got deep water, and that's it, really. Yeah. If you want to fish shallow, we're going to have a, on a real deep um, shelf, and a, the bait's just going to roll off it. Yeah. The presentation's going to be really poor. But just a quick walk around the other side of this this point and there's, there's a couple of lovely bars. Yeah. You can just see the area around here. It's really, really rocky, really steep. It goes right down to 15 metres. And there is a little river bed, as they call it, if that's what it is, where it goes down to 15 and then comes up to 12. But personally, I'd rather have rods at different depths. And those depths or along a little bar, like a pointy area. That's what you tend to do on places like Cashin when you're fishing there. And we have actually just found out as well that earlier today, one of the um, lads that Edwin knows has caught one in two meters, which is the sort of thing that I'd expect the carp to be in because there's so many crayfish really close in here. And um, somewhere where you can stagger your rods at different depths. Did you see that, mate? Yeah. What was it? A predator fish, mate. Was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah well, there you go. Mm. Back on the parasite mold, not feeling too good still. But I'm in the new swim and it definitely looks more carpy out there. It's a lovely southwesterly wind that's blowing and according to my weather app it's going to be there for the next four days and it certainly wasn't like this yesterday so it definitely looks a much more interesting area to fish. I've got the rod spread out at different depths. We've got the right hand rod in three meters, middle one in six and the left hander in nine. So yeah, if the fish come through here, because there's a, a channel around to the left there, and if they come through here, which they're gonna at some stage, I've certainly got some good areas covered. But yeah, it's definitely looking more carpy today than it did yesterday. So let's just hope the poo stays away and the bad guts stay away 
and the carp come along. We shall see. Thursday and we're on the move again today because we've not seen any fish close to where we are and Edwin's fished a spot last night and had three fish from it and he's moving out of there today so we're going to go and have a little go there. Um, there's definitely fish not far away from here, right out in the middle, but not where we can get lines to, unfortunately. And you can probably tell from my voice that I'm feeling an awful lot better today. Almost back to 100%, so, uh, yeah, really on it and ready to move and get on the fish. So, looking forward to the next eight days we've got left of the trip, and I'm sure we can turn this one around. Well, they don't call him Adventures for nothing, because he came fishing last night, Without a bivvy, he just brought an overwrap, and look, it's an old Venture overwrap. Anybody that remembers Venture, the company that me, Briggsy, and Rob used to be, used, me and Rob used to be involved with. And uh, yeah, what a setup, Ed. He had no landing net. He lost his landing net in the water. Yeah, just fell off. <laughs> I was there, one rod, one landing net, and it sank down. So with a line in my hand, met in the water, trying to lift it. Hanging overboard with my feet <laughs> in the boat. Crazy Dutchman. But, yeah. But it's a big fish, mate, yeah? A fish. A big Happy fish. Happy days. Happy days, mate. Yeah. So let's have a look at it on the bank. Look at this for a gorgeous wild Spanish carp. How wild it is. That is a mega fish. My first sighting of one of these Orellana beasts. Lovely mate, yeah? Yeah, lovely fish, happy days. Happy days, mate. <sighs> Swim number three, and this is where Edwin's caught a couple of fish last night, so we're going in the back of somebody else, which you don't like doing, but at the end of the day, um, he's not fishing anymore, so there's fish definitely down here. And I've got all three of my rods out. I've got these two on the left. This one right on the left in three metres of water. Just off that point, just over there. And then the second one along is in seven metres of water. Again, just off the point. But the right-hander, as you can see there, look at that spoolage, that is proper spoolage. I thought it was going to empty at one point, but um, yeah, it's probably 300 metres out. And you can just see in the distance a flat spot right out there. I'm not sure if it's clear on the camera, but it's a little bit beyond there because that point that you can just see over there, Right out from there, as I was rowing out and having a look at the area, I could see a seagull sat on a rock and he was probably 100 metres off the point, so I thought, yeah, that looks like a decent area. So I've gone beyond the seagull and that particular point seems to run for about 200 metres right out there. So what you've got is a almost a, a bowl area here that's... Um, Bottoms out at about 12 metres in depth, but there's the odd weed bed dotted about. And at the end of the day, Edwin's caught some fish from around here, so there were certainly fish around here last night, and he said there's a few around here this morning as well. When he was uh, getting up this morning, he saw one or two lumping out. So, yep, swim number three. Looks good, rods are out. Let's get the kettle on. <laughs> no, I'm laughing that we've been hemmed in, we've been stitched up big time. I've just come back from my run, first one for a few days. And yep, yeah, we've got anglers to the right, anglers over there on the point where I'm fishing, all carp anglers. We're in a little bay and we're both close to 50 years old now. We've carp fished quite a long time, we know a little bit about the game 
and one of those lads came over and said you won't catch unless you use sticky krill. Since we've been here somebody said we won't catch unless you use the goo. Um, yeah, that's the industry. Cart fishing today is full of people that know everything about rigs and bait but they don't know anything about carp. And that's not to knock sticky or corder with the goo, they're both good products. But if you know about carp and you understand carp, then you can catch on whatever you're confident on if they're having it at that minute. A big lake like this is not going to be only responsive to one bait or one rig. We've also had somebody say you won't catch unless you use size six hooks. So Edwin's been down here yesterday, didn't use the goo, didn't use sticky, caught on tigers, caught on big hooks. The modern day world, mate. Yeah, it certainly is, mate. But we've got seven nights and we're going to do our own thing. We're going to find our own spots now. I yeah. reckon we're going to catch. Yeah. Get away from all these people. Find a spot where there's no roads. <laughs> and just, uh, a couple of moaning uh, old Victor Meldrews. <laughs> and if you don't know who Victor Meldrew is, then just use the goo. <laughs> <laughs> Another change of swim, another moaning crowy, another moaning Jimbo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's fake, honestly, trust me, that's fake. He's been moaning like anything. As soon as, as, soon as I turn the camera on, he starts getting, oh yes, I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Same old pictures on Facebook, Black Friday, throwback Thursday. Yeah, but we're trying to get something new from here. So I like this swim though. We definitely heard fish out here the other day when we were uh, close by and we've got some lovely features out here. We've got a, a nice plateau in front which comes up to about nine and a half metres. Just in front of there we've got about 13 and a half metres in the riverbed. So, you know, there's a good variety and a good opportunity to spread the rods about. So, let's hope that swim number five, I think it is now, is going to do us a fish. So I found the plateau there in 10 metres and then all I'm going to do now is dunk the lead down, feel it all the way down and when it hits the deck just lift it up a little bit, dunk it along, that's nice and all I've got to do now is put some bait out and what we're using today is a mixture of corn, hemp, groats, sweet corn and maize, put a nice bed of this out top of that goes the boilies. What we've got here is some 26 millers, some real gobstoppers. This is the SLK from DNA and all I'm doing is just scattering a couple of three handfuls around the hook bait. Not putting a great deal of bait out but making sure that it's nice and tight. And that's it. And then we go back to the bank to set everything in place. And it's easy today when you've got no wind, but trust me, this week we've had some really bad winds and it makes this very, very difficult, especially when you've got no battery power left. And as you can see there, all I'm doing is just dropping the tip of the rod below the water to make sure that the line sinks itself as I go back to the bank. Right then, uh, day five I think it is, we're on the Friday and I'm very much recovered from the first 48 hours when I had that norovirus which really did knock me about. I can't remember a time when I've been on the bank and not put my rods out but at the moment I'm fully recovered, I'm raring to go, I'm full of food so um, where are we? Well, so far I'm fishless, I'm not caught anything, which obviously plays on your mind a little bit because I've had a pretty tough autumn in England as well. It's been hard going over there, so I've had quite a lot of blank hours. But um, I know sooner or later it'll change. And I'm actually quite happy with the swim that I've got at the moment because it's got some nice features out in front. And the one thing I'll say about these big waters, which uh, 
you know, when you get in there for, in a swim for 24 hours, you, you think you know everything about it when you've been out there with the echo sound, but um, nothing could be further from the truth because the second day you go out there, you start to find spots that you didn't see on the first day, and the third day you start to find even more spots. So I think we're going to stay in this area because I like the features that I've got. Um, I didn't hear any fish showing at all last night or this morning, and I've been up since first light. But that's not to say there aren't carp in here and that um, there aren't any carp that are going to come in here as well because I do think this area is quite shallow for the, the, um, the majority of the lake and at the moment, although it's winter time over here, it's 15, 16 degrees. You know, that ain't anything like winter in England when the carp start to shut down. I think the fish in this venue at the moment are really still active. We've seen um, the last few days be quite quiet for carp but... We're in touch with one or two of the lads that are on the lake and this last 12 hours or so there have been quite a few that have been caught so you know from all around the lake so there's still fish feeding and um, at the moment it's just trying to work out the spots that are going to do us bites in this lake in this swim and i think what i've got to do is cover a, a variety of different depths work out the depth that the fish are at maybe put a rod at three meters one at six meters one at ten meters or something like that and then um, trying to sort of unlock the jigsaw but uh, I'm, I'm confident we've still got a week left and you know I've not come over here to to catch some whackers although there's been an 80 pounder caught out of here recently which is a really really special fish that's a really rare one and from talking to a lot of the locals that fish here on a regular basis there's probably probably only half a dozen or so fish over 30 kilos in here so um, you know I've not come over here specifically for those carp I've come over here just to catch some carp from Orellana and there's a lot of 30 pounders and 40 pounders in here from by all accounts and just to get hold of one or two of those would be uh, a result for me but at the moment it's it's uh, still a case of trying to unlock the jigsaw but uh, this particular swim is certainly worth staying in for a few more days because it looks very interesting so hopefully we'll tell them about the puzzle in this one and something will come our way First sighting of it then. Under the boat. Saw the flashes. Definitely a carp. <clears throat> First one, one happy man. Might not be a monster, but I'm not bothered. Well, it's taken a bit of time, but perseverance has paid off in the end. And that's my first carp from Orellana. And I'm really, really happy. Because I've sat here now for six nights, is it we've been here, Jim? Yes, six, yeah, night, six nights, fourth swim. Fourth swim, no fifth swim. Fifth swim, yeah. Fifth swim. And we've got one. Mega. So then here's a look at the rig that we're using this week then. And it's nothing dissimilar to what I always use when I'm on the continent fishing for big fish. We've got a size two hook. We've got a liner liner. We've got some shock tight hook link. That's 50 pound shock tight from Avid. Roughly about 12 inches of hook link on there. We've got a snowman hook bait from DNA, both SLK, and then we've got a 12 ounce lead and an avid lead clip just to finish everything off. 
And as you can see there, we've got a really heavy mono leader. That's 50 pound mono straight through to braid all the way through to the wheels. So really simple, but it's working at the moment. <laughs> What did you just say about your mom and some cream that she gives you? <laughs> no, the story is, he's always been running, and if he doesn't wash his backside, he gets a sore ass. I just said, if I fish a bit too much, I suffer with the same problem. So, my mum, mum sorts me out some cream from the chemist. <laughs> How many days into the session are we now then? We are mm, day, day six into the session. So, when did you last have a bath um, or wash? Uh, set off six days ago, seven days ago. Back <laughs> in Manchester. Ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, does it? I shouldn't say anything. I've since then I've been for three decent sized runs. I've uh, I had the, the well I shouldn't say the shit, but I had sickness and diarrhoea for a couple of days, and I've not had a proper wash yet, other than a little should we call it a bathe in the in the lake. So yeah, wow, proper roughing it, mate. Yeah, why waste time going back and having a shower? I'd have a beer and a bank and then. Um, Got all the time in the world for showers when you get back home so hardcore gym no hardship <laughs> it's changed from being wild gym to hardcore gym <laughs> <laughs> I've been checking out my weather app and the next six hours we've got some serious rain coming in and I think that's it over there because it looks really black and heavy so we're batting down the hatches I think wind's about to change as well big fish conditions on a big lake let's hope it brings the big carp and here it comes We've got all the rods set before the downpour. Apparently, according to a couple of locals that we know, the rain brings on the carp, so maybe that's a good sign. What's happening there, mate? Outside, we've had our best night so far of the trip. We've had six fish and we've had a, a change of wind. It's gone from a southwest into a cold northeasterly, and it's definitely pushed, pushed the carp down feed on the bottom. Just making the most of it, really. Unfortunately, the wind was really strong. It, it took a lot of effort to put the rods out, um, but the, um, unfortunately, after the pickup, the wind was too strong. We couldn't get the rods back out. But that's fishing on these big wild lakes sometimes. It's just, you just got to play it, play it how it goes. By far our most successful night last night and a decent fish moved in and these are just two of six bites that we had. Mega beautiful fish inside. It was a wild night with mega wind and we put the effort in and we've been rewarded. Yeah. Some beautiful stunning fish. I'm sure we could have had a few more if we could have got the rods back out but it was a bit too wild for it so hopefully they're still there and we'll get a few more tonight. Yes, beautiful sight, absolutely gorgeous. Right, I'm here with Gonzalo and David, who are two local Spanish carp anglers who fished the lake an awful lot over the years. So they're going to explain to us a little bit about Orellana and the size of water that we've got. How many acres is it, Gonzalo? It's uh, about uh, 12,000 12, acres. Okay, and uh, how, how deep does it go at its deepest part? I think more, more or less 45 metres. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a really natural lake as well, isn't it? Yeah. Good quality water. Yeah, yeah. yeah here you can find a um, uh, beach that has a blue flag. Okay, blue uh, flag, it's, yeah. It's almost drinkable and a lot of people use for for swimming, so very clear waters. Yeah, and I, I see from the amount of carp anglers on it, it's a very popular lake, so it's been fished a lot over the years, yeah? Yeah, we have been fishing Oriana from the last, I think, 15 years, 20 yeah. years, a lot of a lot of time. And uh, we are very happy to be here, not every weekend, but a yeah. lot of... Uh, 
weeks uh, we, we we fish here and it's, yeah. it's incredible. It's, uh, and David's one of the most successful carp anglers on the lake, yeah, isn't he? I think so. I think uh, yeah. David uh, has very very big carps here. Yeah. Uh, he has been able to catch very big ones. Yeah. And uh, you can see in social media. It's, yeah, yeah. It's very da David famous. Molina on social media is yeah. one of the most uh, well-known anglers in Spain. Now, can you ask David how many 30 kilo fish he thinks are in the lake? Simon, ¿quieres saber cuántas carpas por encima de 30 kilos crees que puede haber en Noriñán? Yo creo que diferente unas 10, 12 carpas por encima de los 30 kilos. He said that no more than 10, 12 carps above uh, 30 kilos can be in the water. Yeah, yeah, because I've just seen on his on his phone as well. He's got photographs of all the big carp in here, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah and he's been following them all over the years. So. Um, Give the, um, the the viewers a rough idea of how many carp are in here. Just is the thousands of carp in here? Lots lots of carp in the lake. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to know how many carps can be in the water. There are a lot of a lot of carps above 20 kilos. Yeah. Uh, the average can be around 13, 14 kilos. 13, 14 kilos puede ser la media. Sí. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's very normal to to catch uh, carps above 20 kilos when you come, but depends on the pressure. Yeah. There are yeah. a lot of anglers that come every week and here during the week. A lot of boats. Mm -hmm. uh, so the so the lake has some pressure, so not always is easy to catch mm -hmm. uh, 20 kilos carp, but there are a lot. Yeah. Can you ask David then what his his preferred tactics are for the lake? He's fished here more than anyone. And, uh, ¿Cuáles son tus principales técnicas o tácticas que, que sueles usar aquí para poder coger buenos peces? Yo suelo utilizar siempre para la pesca de grandes peces, eh, pescar siempre al paso de los peces. Concentrar mucho la comida y poca comida. Es muy concentrado. He normally uh, look for the fishes, so he, he moves a lot, and he concentrates the bait. Mm -hmm. He normally uh, put not so much bait mm -hmm. and put all the bait very, uh, very, very tight. One, yeah, yeah. One spot, and yeah. he is looking every time where the fish yeah. are moving. And he prefers to use boilies more than anything. David does, yeah. Tú prefieres usar boilies. Sí. Siempre yeah. boilies, mejor que semilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big boilies or smaller boilies. Boilies grandes, pequeños boilies. 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for all the info, guys. And it's lovely to to meet you both. And. Uh, Hopefully, yeah, we'll get some nice fish during the course of the week. It's a pleasure to, to be here with you. Thank you. Morning. So, a bit of an update, and yeah, we're on the fish still at the moment. Wind has really swung round. It's the opposite direction now. It's coming from the east, and I know we're in southern Spain, but bloody hell, it's freezing. It really is, really cold. It's uh, one of those days when you get a massive dew drop on the end of your nose for most of the day, but um, it's good to be on the fish now. Last night we thought we was going to get a few more bites, but uh, we just had the one this morning, which is about 10 kilos of mine, and then uh, Jim's just lost an half decent fish as well, which is just taking him straight into a snag, which is a bit of a gutter. But, um, you know, they're still out there, and all the bites at the moment are coming from the same area, which is roughly about 10 metres deep. It's like a plateau straight out in front of us. There's a riverbed either side of it where it goes down to um, 12, 13, 14 metres in places. But all along there, there's there's like old tree stumps and bits and pieces. So I'm guessing that's what Jim's just lost that fish on. But uh, they're certainly out there. First thing in the morning, you tend to see them showing quite a lot, and last thing at night as well. I mean, they are at range. All the bites are coming about 200 metres out. So um, you know, it's it's pretty hard work, you know, rowing out there and baiting up. And I mean, the wind's been really really strong over the last few days as well. So keeping a, a straight line back to the bank has been. Um, pretty hard to do but um, with the use of the engines on the boats and stuff it's um, it's possible so you know we're fishing effectively we've got uh, four nights left now we're, we're on Monday morning and you know the good thing is we're on the fish so all we can do is, is keep going it's um, due to stay like this now for the next few days the weather so it's going to remain pretty cold and you know yeah you expect to get a little bit of sun when you come out to Spain but at least we're catching fish so uh, yeah, four nights left. Let's see if we can get anything bigger. That is so impressive. And then you've got these little roads that are running down the side. There's a couple there. There's one down there. And the ants themselves are quite big. I've seen bigger ants than these, but you're just seeing the hole there. 
but um, they're really, really impressive. And then you just go over the road and you've got another little village. There you go. Another massive one there, look. These little roads that run off and take them between the villages. You just see them running along there and then we've got a normal road there and just across the way we've got some more villages there you go little road there and some more mega ants nests absolutely awesome nature really is fantastic you do get to see some wonderful things when you go carp fishing around the world that's a lovely sight Every day, about now, which is just before dark, you get these birds, and I don't know what they are, that are just gliding around in a little group. Obviously there's some kind of bird of prey, but uh, I'm not a bird man, so I don't know, but that is just a lovely part of nature. Lovely to see. Just watching the sun go down on another evening and it's about now when things start to happen on here because all of our bites have been coming through the hours of darkness right the way through to first thing in the morning and we're just hoping that tonight we get a, another stamp of decent fish that move through because last night we definitely had some biggins in front of us. Prior to last night we've been mostly catching um, 11 and 12 kilo fish but uh, yesterday we had four fish over 17 kilo so you know some half decent fish in there and you know, there's definitely some better fish out here as well. We've had one or two real lumps crashing around. So, um, yeah, we're just hoping that they're out, they're out in front of us. And, you know, we had a new wind last night and the wind's about to change a bit this evening as well. And that definitely moved the fish down into the deeper water on that plateau. So all the fish coming from about 10 metres in depth right the way out, about 200, 250 metres out. So, yeah, just getting ready for it. So really exciting. We've got three nights left now and we just hope that we're going to get one of these real big ones because they're definitely in here. There you go. Absolutely fantastic. Orellana 44 pounder. A bit of a benchmark fish, one of the 20 kilo from the trip. Managed to get one. Brilliant. What a session. You haven't got to walk very far on this place to come across something that's dead. Just walking along the margins you see all sorts of stuff. There's a, a little baby board that's obviously drowned. But all along you're seeing loads of dead fish, just chewed, chewed up fish that's uh, died of natural causes or in that case more than likely at the hands of the otter because the lake's got otters on it. It's obviously very natural over here and only the other night we had a family of them right in front of the swim but it was too dark for me to film them. Edwin's got some footage of uh, a family of otters right in front of his house but uh, the difference is over here, obviously it's just part of nature whereas in England they've been reintroduced by man and that's what's causing the problems on our fisheries but uh, yeah very very wild lake, very cold at the moment as well but a lovely place to be. 
This month's product plug is the 12,000 ACR reels from Avid. I've been using these reels for over 12 months now on all sorts of different waters. If you check out some of my recent blogs, I've used them at places like Spitfire Pool in the UK, which is tiny, right the way up to huge pieces of water, such as Orellana, where we are today. And all I can say is good things about them. The line lay, the oscillation and the clutch are all super smooth, the sort of things that you want from a good reel. And they're certainly as good as any of the top end reels that you're paying absolute fortune for. From my point of view, they're really robust because I'm very heavy handed and they'll hold up to 550 yards at 0.35 mono so they're perfect for anyone who wants to upgrade the reels to the big pit size. You can also find a smaller 8000 version if you want something a little bit more compact and you can pick these reels up for around 70 quid from retailers. If you want any further info about them then check out avidcarp.com. What's in the pan Jimbo? Well, was that our daily pan of maize cooking away? And it's pan of maize, not pan of chocolate. No, pan of maize. And it smells absolutely delightful. In fact, it needs turning down just a bit. Do you always boil your, your maize? Do you not just soak it? No, I always boil my maize. I think it it just makes it a little bit more special when you boil, um, when you boil it. I soak it for 24 hours and I boil it for like 30 minutes. Do you do the same with tigers or you? No, with my tigers, I find if I can soak tigers for four or five days, um, they don't need boiling. Um, some people say, oh God, you don't boil your tigers, but there's absolutely no difference at all. Mm. It, they're the same hardness, the same, there's the same sweetness to them. So, but then I've got a facility where I can leave them in a, in a bin and soak them for like four or five days. I do 25 kilo at a time. Looking good. Yeah, looking good. Right, we're coming to the end of the trip now. It's just a another night left and I wouldn't say it's an easy water but I wouldn't say it's an hard water either mate, what do you think? Yeah, same opinion, yeah. I've had two guys get in touch with me saying um, oh, they're, they're going to come down but they, they thought it was too rock hard but then um, I said to Simon, I said this type of fishing, you don't want it easy you don't want to be turning up and catching fish straight away then no. the old experience is just too easy so I quite like it difficult um, I, I want to work for my fish yeah. and this place makes you work for your fish and we certainly worked for them this week. Oh, yeah, God, if we hadn't moved as many times as we had, we wouldn't have found them, would we? You know, we didn't settle in a swim, we weren't happy places and didn't like the look of this and we had to see some fish and then when we found fish, we caught them. That's right, mate. The first five days, uh, we moved five yeah. times because we just knew we weren't on fish. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure there's quite a lot of anglers, that no way they would have moved five times and they, they would have blanked the entire trip, but yeah. you've got to put that effort in, yeah. you've got to work, work yeah. for it. So don't think, guys, if you're out there, that this place is mega tough. You know, if you fancy having a, a bit of a challenge a few days away in the sun, it's definitely worth having a trip. It's a lovely place and we've had a fantastic week, thanks to Edwin. Yep. So you're probably wondering how we got ourselves over here and basically we flew from Manchester Airport and um, what we did is just brought reels, end tackle, sleeping bags, coats, you know, essential items with us and the rest of the gear was provided by uh, Angling Escapes who we've come over here with. That's a Dutch company that's owned by the old mate Edwin and his Mrs. Rezzy. What else is included in the package, mate? Um, there is a possibility that we take you up from the airport and bring you over here or you can rent the car by yourself. Um, we have in contact with the, one of the best carp anglers of this region, uh, David Molina. Yeah. Um, David knows the complete lake. David knows the swims. David knows the spots. So um, we he's tried to- some amazing fish on the lake as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. caught so many big fish. Yeah. Uh, he knows this like his back pocket. Yeah. Um, he's amazing. Yeah, you get your uh, permits included as well, yep, don't you? permits yeah. are there. Yeah. Uh, all the gear is there um, and we bring you to the lake. Yeah, and, then and if somebody wants to move swim as well, you'll move them around the lake. No problem, no problem. I'd rather move them than sit there and wait for something that might not even be coming. Yeah. That in the distance is Jim and he's just gone out for one. It's nearly first light and he believes it's a 50 pounder. So we've got a good one. After all these days, that's what we've come here for. We know they're in here. And apparently he's nearly lost it. Around a crayfish pot. Is it all smiles, mate? All smiles, sir. Si. Good on you, lad. I've actually still got the crayfish pot here. It's full of crayfish. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> 
Mega mate. 50 pounder. Well, I think so, mate. Yeah, yeah, Don't tell me it's a double now. <laughs> Just so deep. Oh gosh. Oh my word, that's that's definitely a 50 pounder. Oh my word. He's a beast. Get in, dude. Get in. Well, <laughs> good on you, lad. Well on you, mate. Cheers, Simon. Good on you, fella. Thanks, mate. Well deserved, that, There's mate. There's the old um, crayfish pot I brought in as well, with it. Can is you that, imagine? Is that a PB as well? That's a PB. Oh, no. I'm going to eat well tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> good on you, mate. Let's get him weighed in. Look at the colour on it, mate. Look at that pink there. It's all along its belly. That's beautiful, that is, mate. It's not very often I get jealous of people catching fish, but that is a fish I would love to catch. It really it's is. Nice fish, that mate. Yeah, that's a lovely fish. Cheers, thank you very much, Sai. Thank you very much. So I pull it out. Pull the sling out. You got it, or do you want me to do it? Yeah, on, mate. Ready? Oh. What's it reading, dude? What's it reading, mate? Scales are already zeroed. Definitely a 50, that's for sure. Shift your hand. Have a look at the scales. <sighs> it's just under 56 pounds, mate. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. ho. Just, it's, it's bouncing above 56. Lift, lift it a bit higher, mate, because I think it's not even off the floor. <sighs> what have we got? 56 pound, mate. There you go. 56 pound. Get in, dude. Hold on, mate. Look at that. That is what? Yeah. A happy chappy. One happy chappy, mate. Good lad. And what a way to end the session. Yeah, what a brace that is, Sai. It's been a tough old week. And it just shows if you stick at it, work at it, these are the rewards sometimes. Happy Doesn't got them, mate. Go it doesn't always go like to plan like this, but when it does, it's just fantastic. How big is the top one? Top one's 56, bottom one's 46. Both caught within like 30 minutes of each other. Oh, it's great, mate. Absolutely fantastic. beautiful. Fantastic. Beautiful. Return back to its home. What a great trip, mate. mate it's been a amazing. lovely way to end it as well. Yeah, totally amazing trip, mate. It's been a difficult, rock hard trip. First six days, we caught virtually nothing. We stuck at it, moved five times, and it just shows a bit of hard work pays off. Bit of graft. Bit of graft, mate. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Cheers, Sai. Proper adventure. Yeah, great team, mate. Great teamwork.